Well, it's been three weeks and we're back and it's time to go to heaven. We're episode seven here on season two. And Bo, Bo, I tell you, there's been a lot of things that have happened since the last time we were on. Gordon Lightfoot passed away. Yeah. Last night or yesterday. And do you know what happened 41 years ago within a couple days from when this airs? 41 years. We've yeah, been 1982. 41, 41 Ryan, years ago. Ryan was born. No, a little longer. That was a little longer. Jim long. grabbed a bag of Cheetos and sat in the basement and watched episode one of the Dukes of Hazard 41 years ago this week. No, it couldn't have been the first time. Never, yes, it ever, is. I guarantee never, you ever, the Dukes ever. of Hazard debuted in the 70s, not 1982. <laughs> it said 41. I saw it on Facebook. It's true. Then that's when it went off the air. It went from the 70s into the 80s. Sorry, Jerry, you're wrong. Damn it. Once, once again. That's why we got Ryan on the podcast. He's the fact checker. You, well, Jerry keeps his streak alive. I'm not knowing what he's talking <laughs> about. Now drinking. I need I'm to just, know on the Dukes of Hazard. I'm just going to keep drinking. He's old, well, you're drinking 20. like year old Linen Kugels. Well, it doesn't matter if it's year old or not. It's still pretty tasty. Oh, for What's 70s. the expiration date? It doesn't have a born on date. Oh, yeah, it does. It has. Uh, oh, this was made on July 4th of 2022. So the Dukes of Hazard aired. January 26, 1979 to February 8th, 1985. So none of your dates right. match with anything. Shit. You completely ruined the opening of the show. No, because Jim did sit with a bag of Cheetos in his mom's basement and watched it. Cut. <laughs> oh. Nowhere but nowhere but up from here. Oh, nowhere yes. but downhill. You know what today is? Uh, today May is 2nd. May 2nd. Yeah, it's the day after May Day. The, where's our May baskets? And, I don't and see it's two days before May the 4th. May the fourth be with you. Yes. Oh wait, I got a song. I also got a picture. I also got a picture. Not to my father. You need the 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 heavy breathing in there. Throw up that picture I gave you, Nate. That's how I spent my weekend. I'm one of those guys. You got to dress in one of those suits. Pick which one I am. You did not. You're the one. Oh, in the third row, about mid one, with, the, the, little, with the little pudgy mid drift. I'm the short one. The short one. <laughs> I know so my that's daughter Photoshop, went to, right? No. That's not Photoshop. Mm, that's not Photoshop. That's my so daughter. So you went to a dance deal. At, uh, uh, what is a bunch it? Of Hollywood Studios, Disney's Hollywood Studios. And you got to dress um, up as a stormtrooper. I, you know what? If I if I could pick a job, like if I could just do a job just for fun, you know what I would do? I would be Darth Vader. At Hollywood Studios. I would just dress up as Darth Vader and walk around if they'd let me. I wouldn't, they don't have to pay me. It'd be so much fun. It would. They don't have to pay you? No. To dress up as Darth Vader and mm-hmm. walk around. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe we could get him to do that at Super Nationals. Because it's cool. Oh, I speaking of Super Nationals, animals. you won't believe it. Jim yeah. and I witnessed something that you will, unless you were there, you'll never believe it. I think Jerry has something to say. <laughs> We witnessed okay. a longer. What did we witness? Meeting. We witnessed a longer's driver meeting. Longer's driver meeting dri- than you. Yeah. Were you talking at Boone? No. In Boone, Chase <laughs> Alves can give oh, a longer oh, an driver's speed, meeting. Yeah, but he's new. Can. I know. Yeah, what's he, his he excuse? Doesn't, he doesn't know what he's going to say. Yet. <laughs> no, it was all on paper. It was on paper. It was written out. Hey, you want to know May fourth? May fourth. Interesting though? fact. What, since what? you jumped off it real quick. It's also Robert Lawton's birthday. It is. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds? Wow. May the fourth oh, be with you be Lawton's birthday. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's My mom's been, birthday. He's characterized as the evil empire. So, I mean, it's such a fitting birthday for, for Lottie. Don't you think? It is. I wish yeah. my birthday was May 4th. Could be May 5th. It'd be kind of weird, though. Drink margaritas all day. Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. May 5th, that's another. Yeah, that's coming up. Was that Friday? Yeah, that's Friday. That's the day after the 4th. Oh, man. <laughs> you got margaritas at Marshalltown? Might as well. I say it. We'll we start didn't. drinking at noon. <laughs> we rained out on my birthday, so I'll have to come to Marshalltown Friday. And hey, that's oh, happy, bir- happy late birthday, by the way. Friday. That's right. You're going yeah, to drink, drink Friday night? You'll fart. Drink Friday night? I'm still night, not yeah. your old. Your age. Yeah, we're still You'll not You'll be there someday. Old. I don't know. Brian, how old are you? You don't know the I thought you knew the answer to that. Beauty right? does not give her age. Well, three <laughs> years younger than me? I'm 49. Two years younger than me. Jesus, I would have I would have guessed like thirty five. Yeah. I know, me you too. Look like, oh, you look like shit. I need you to do something. I, I mean, don't know. Your... Oh. How old are you, Jerry? Forty. You'll be forty eight this year. Forty eight right? in August. Okay. Hey, we won't be Jim Standard. Forty eight. We'll wow. We'll be getting there. So, what are we can talk about today, besides Star Wars? How about we have any races coming up? We got a guest, I think, today, don't we? I think so. 
Do we have a guest? There's all, it, it's that time of the year, Jim. There's always races coming on, and sometimes there's big events happening, too. In the state of Iowa or outside mm-hmm. the state of Iowa? I, get, I had this question asked over the weekend again. I was on cheerleader patrol over the weekend at Disney with my daughter, who was made the national finals mm-hmm. for, with her cheerleading team. So I was down there, and I again, the parents always ask what you do. And, and one of the guys, you know, say, oh, so when, when's racing start? And I'm like, it already has. January 1st is usually what I answer when people ask me that anymore. But it's kind of crazy how you, you racing know, Brett, is start, is It's still, can we got like, crappy weather around here still there's the people around just, here though that, that think the racetrack out here is all we do correct or in this you know immediate what? area or in the immediate area yeah. yeah you know what would sound better is just say you were down in florida for your daughter's cheerleading competition you know you're on cheerleader patrol it just sounds a little creepy <laughs> a little bit <laughs> i don't mean it to sound creepy i was trying to, to say it and he was dressed up way. in a stormtrooper's costume <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not to dress yeah. up yeah. as a stormtrooper. How did you? Candy. I went to a cheerleading <laughs> thing and I dressed up so nobody knew who I so was. So I take it you didn't have the costume on and you crawled back behind the wheel of your white van with no windows? Is that how <laughs> yeah. that worked? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sounds like something Doug Lockwood would do. <laughs> Free candy. Oh, oh. oh. Welcome Speak to the, the show, Doug. Doug. Welcome, well, 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 welcome so where, Doug, welcome where insults are much required. <laughs> Yeah, well, Jim standards on here, so I wouldn't expect anything else. Ain't that the truth? God, he is a regular viewer. Thank yes, you, Doug. He, <laughs> he knows Jim well. He knows me. <laughs> no, we've got Doug today, so we can talk about the uh, the Central California Clash. Yeah, it's uh, it's here, and uh, we got good weather this week. Uh, although it's raining right now, so so you. You'll have good weather the rest of this week, but not really right now. <laughs> well, my race on Thursday, uh, I got a little rain in the morning, but it's supposed to be less than a tenth. Antioch is tomorrow, and they got hit with about a half an inch this morning. So they think they'll be all right, and then we'll be good the rest of the week in the 70s. Now, were you, did you go down to Antioch to help? I know you guys work together quite a bit, and... Yeah, I'll be there uh, tomorrow. Oh, okay. tomorrow. We'll head out there and we'll start in Antioch tomorrow. Then we'll come back to Merced at our track and then we'll head to Hanford and then Tulare and then Bakersfield. Perfect. That's five shows in five days. No off yeah. days. I think it goes Wednesday through Sunday, doesn't it? Yeah, Wednesday through Sunday this year. I think uh, this is our fourth year and I've done it different every year. The first year was six races, six tracks six days then the second year we went to eight tracks in eight days with a day off in the middle so it was nine days total and then last year we did six races at three tracks at two nights at each track and then this year we're kind of trying to find the happy medium with everyone and doing a five races in five days yeah i came out to year two the the nine eight races in nine day schedule. I can't flew out to LA and I think we did the Southerns. My wife and I did the Southern track. So we went to Bakersfield and then, uh, and to Larry. Larry Hanford, and Merced, and Merced. And then yep. And then I headed back home and Dave went to Antioch and what was the other track up there? Placerville, Placerville. and Petaluma yeah. and Chico. Yep. He went up to the, he did the Northern swing. I did the Southern swing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it, you know what's cool about California? They got really good Mexican food. Yeah, and you can find it anywhere. <laughs> I'm telling you, our goal every day was to find the 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 best Mexican restaurant in each town we went to. You just stop at somebody's I'm house. I'm still, and almost. I could. Out of tacos? I'm, yeah, I'm still paying for it, too. I think I gained 40 pounds that in those four we nights. used to do that in vegas you used to eat at the same mexican restaurant still do every, yeah every, oh yeah. yeah i heard you used to eat a lot of uh yeah, we'll, we'll probably bread. be we'll probably be eating there this year in vegas yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm going out for the formula one race <laughs> got the vip yeah, the, package at the bellagio Shh, don't tell them jim doesn't even know what california looks like <laughs> <laughs> hey i was there you came in 2019 and that was, you came during our fair race. And that yes. was my wonderful employees. 
<laughs> fire truck into the water truck. I remember the lunch the, the next truck. day. <laughs> yep, and then broke the water truck, and I thought I was going to get yelled at by the CEO because we just dusted out Kitty Land. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite an adventure. That's crazy. The very first time I ever, very first week I ever worked for IMCA, the first trip I took was to California with Jim. I think I probably told this story. Went out there to, to Hanford to the banquet at Hanford King Speedway at the time is what it was called. And, and Dave Swindell had Jim on a radio show. And I was like, what in the world did I get myself into? <laughs> a circus. Yeah. Was that the one I got the referee shirt at? Yeah, the it was. <laughs> yeah, they gave you a referee shirt for a, I don't know. Gift I might need a few of those this week. <laughs> you will. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah it's, not, no. it's been an interesting start to the season out here for sure. Weather-wise or? Yeah, I mean, it was 94 on Saturday, and now it's 54 out there and raining. So pretty sort of much like out here. already. I think it's about every state yes. in, the, in, the, in the country at this point in time. Spring hasn't shown up yet. It just hasn't. No, it's been raining a lot in California. At least it, it seems like it sure has. January, we were our fairgrounds here. We were a uh, um, we were a federal disaster. The uh, FEMA was actually set up here because our whole town got flooded. Well, yeah, my, well, neighbor, you, my neighbor had to go out there for that. You know what they say: the uh, weather in California changes more than the XR schedule. Jim, why why is your background different? Are you uh, are you not in studio anymore? We don't allow no, him here. We don't allow him. <laughs> we don't want him we, in. Yeah. He's already exceeded his quota for the month. <laughs> Jerry and Jim are like oil and water in the same room. Hey, Jim, uh, Paul's going to be out all week. He said he saved you a room with him. So just wanted to throw that out there. He told me last week. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and you know what's really neat about Doug's track? He's got big signs about fighting in the pits. Why don't you explain that policy to us? <laughs> Those signs don't exist anymore. Uh -oh. <laughs> Those those signs uh, disappeared. I, I think I think the the homeless that broke in stole them. I don't know where they went. Oh, shit happens. Oh yeah, it does. It, it if it's gonna happen, it happens right here in her stead. Oh, that's classic. I think I've had about everything happen uh, this first five races that we've had. I've had more stuff happen than the first four years that we've had this place. Well, get it out of your system now. Yeah. The Al Miller was last weekend. It was 2,500 win for the sport mods Had 33 cars and uh, lost a couple of cars for the clash because of some wrecks. So hopefully they can uh, behave themselves this week. A little issues. You know, I just, you know, we had one car flip on its roof and another one lose the rear end and front end and, you know, it's just a little overdriving, I would say. That's going to happen sometimes. Hey, Brett, uh, I heard you got rid of tacos. Like, you don't eat tacos no more and your choice is now peas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who told you to tell that joke? <laughs> Frozen. No one's oh, right? Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Time yeah. Time yeah. Yeah. Watched an episode that. I was gonna say, time out. Was somebody I'm prompted on? What did somebody prompt somebody on what to say on one of our podcasts? I still like tacos. I still eat tacos all the time. Peas, oh, I, peas, not so much. All right, that's good. I melt a bag of them every now and then, but <laughs> then I'm past that point. Only now, post well, now, now I just got a bag <laughs> of ice on your back. Now I have a bag of ice on my back. True story. It, it's in here somewhere. Well, that's what happens when you have to carry Jerry through the podcast. This is what I got. This is what I got for going to Florida for the Disney for the cheerleading. It was a bad. Are bag. you going this week or did you go last week? We went last week. It was a storm. So I actually have three drivers I lost this week because they're going this week for the summit there. Yeah, that's where we were at summit. So did you it's perform like during week. the cheerleading contest, or why is your back? No, me? I had to. I, I think I hurt my back playing golf with my dad. Oh, okay. Oh, is what I think actually did it in, but you know. Whatever. That's what happens when you're it's how old your dad now? Eighty five. Trying to keep up with an eighty five year old on and, the off the tees. Well, here here's the funny thing. I hurt my back on Thursday playing golf and my dad dislocated his hip on Friday night and was in the ER all Friday night. 
So we had plans to golf on Saturday morning, 18 holes, and guess that 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 did not happen. We were both Should wounded. I was on a wheelchair if you did that. Yeah, we we were both wounded. So, but that's quite the experience. That cheerleading summit is quite the experience. It really is. I like to compare everything to the things that we do around here. And you know, obviously, they've got a an association that governs all of their all their rules, all, you know, the ages they are, the levels of, of the skills. Yeah. The skills that they can Music and can't do. And then they have a so. point system and it's just, to me, all that's is, is interesting. It's just and weird like that. It's I just, can't wait for the uh, all-star qualifiers at Boone to be wearing storm troopers <laughs> uniforms this year. Is that what you're going to bring from sure from your trip to why not? Florida? No. They wouldn't let me take it home though. I just get, they said I could wear it for a little while. So these tracks in, not to change the subject, but the tracks in California, I think California, aside from Iowa, we sanction more tracks in the state of California than any other state in the country. It's a big state. It is. is. But you've got five races in five days. Are those tracks similar out there? I think the tracks out in California, by and large, are shorter than most others in the country, unless I'm mistaken. I think based on the numbers that we collect, I think they're all shorter, quarter mile to three-eighths mile there aren't too many big tracks out there are they all similar that uh, are on this clash schedule uh yeah the antioch antioch merced are probably pretty close and bakersfield uh tulare's a little bit bigger than those ones and then hanford's probably the biggest one at three-eighths uh i think we're a quarter at merced i thought they were all shorter i think to uh, antioch might be a third and uh, Bakersfield's a third. The only biggest track, I think, for IMCA in California that you guys have is probably Paris, would be my guess. Yeah, yeah that, yeah. Oh, that I thought half? it might be Ventura. <laughs> that yeah, a fifth Ventura, might, I think that's a Ventura fifth might be the smallest. <laughs> yeah. That's the smallest. That's got the best But it's view. the most beautiful. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh, that, that, there is no track with better scenery than Ventura. But every yeah. track in California is nice. I mean, you go out there and there's, I, I, I've been to all those facilities that we just talked about and they're all nice. You got a lot county owned ones yeah. primarily, but some private ones as well, like Bakersfield. Um, so they're, they're all very beautiful facilities though. And the settings are, it's always, the weather's over there is pretty, pretty decent. Well, compared to Iowa, it's always nice. Um, you know, and it's just, the tracks are not too far apart from each other. A couple hours, maybe at the most like the farthest hour. like so antioch starts the thing and then it's an hour and a half from antioch to merced or maybe two hours pulling trailers and then from here to from merced to hanford is another hour and a half and then hanford to tulare will be the shortest one that's 15 to 20 minutes and then from tulare to bakersfield's about an hour and a half yeah so it's it's a very manageable tour it's a, it's a good schedule, I think. Good distances, some short ones, and ones that are just about far enough. You know, you start driving four, five, six hours with a race car trailer, you start losing people. Someone's trying to FaceTime me right now. I think you guys might Uh-oh. know her. Uh oh. Baron Stites. Baron Diaz. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, hey I'm, uh, she's a, she actually helps me with all the contingency stuff for the clash. Baron. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're on the podcast with IMCA. You <laughs> called me in the middle of it. Don't say anything bad. Hey, did you hear my Kellen? No, but if you don't have anything to say to Jim or Brett, you can call me later. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Farron. <laughs> Brett, Brett just said hi, Farron. Hello. <laughs> she said hi. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> hey, we can't say that word. That means I was going to be explicit. <laughs> Well, not the it's asshole a, part. on the podcast. Now they're going to have to edit that out. Oh, no, we're not. No. We're not. We're only, yeah, she is the first one to use the F word in, <laughs> in two seasons. She, she is, broke down the wall, so it's yeah. all fair yeah, game. We broke in the ice. Fudge. <laughs> <But, laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I already talked to Jason. It's already done. So. So everything was transferred since he's yeah. calling out. I tell him to talk to Jason. I already sent it. I already transferred it. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye. Love you too. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny when, uh, 
I was waiting for it because you guys were a little Rick called me earlier because uh, Rick's just bought another modified. So he's going to be doing double duty this week. Nice. The more the merrier. Uh, I don't go by that, but I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> more is not merrier sometimes. You prefer quality over quantity? Yeah, I'm definitely quality over quantity. But I think we got, um, we ended up at about 28 pre registered cars for the week. And then we have a bunch that didn't register because they wanted to wait till tomorrow that are going to be running. But I'd imagine we'll be in the, the stock car division. will be stock car and sport mods will probably be two of the higher car counts for the week. The stock cars are really starting to take off out here. Stock cars are taking off everywhere, but it, it's weird because we've had IMCA stock cars in California for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I, used yeah. To work at, when I used to work at Hanford, I used to be the race director back in probably 2003, 2004, and we had them out there. And, yeah, I mean, it was the only track that ran them. Cars, yeah. Hanford so, for many years was the only track the, that was running. The Stites race we had in October, we had the first B main in California for stock cars in October. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how divisions take off and some do, some don't and why they do and why they don't. It, it's so you can never figure it out. We could never figure it out. You know, we ran stock cars at the duel for many years and never really got a, a, a real good traction with them. Um, swapped them with sport mods and, and the car count exploded. Yeah. Um, but now it's, you know, stock cars have got the momentum. Sport mods are still, whether people want to acknowledge it or not, sport mods are the second largest division right. in IMCA. Everybody talks about stock cars, but stock cars are not bigger than sport mods, not, not on a national basis for us. There's still more sport mods than there is stock cars. Our modified car count would be pretty good out here if they stopped moving out to your guys' neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think we, I think we gain, uh, we gain another two or three this year. That's that damn I transfer. It's more portal, like four or five. Yeah, yeah. The transfer, yeah, yeah, the transfer yeah, portal. The NCAA transfer. Yeah, portal. Getting the getting the transfer portal right yeah, now. Yeah, we'll NCAA transfer how portal. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, at Park Jefferson and ran into a California driver Saturday night. Yeah, there's uh, just. I mean, Why are they doing Flip that? Moved out there. Laney's moved out there. Why are uh, they doing that, Doug? What's that? Why are they doing that? They do. I think there's because they can get more races in the, during the week, but then out here. Do uh, they come out here and, just to race, though? Is that the yeah. primary, primarily yeah. why those guys are moving? Yeah, like little Morris That's is going out there for the summer. He's leaving right after the Oregon Speed Week. I read, and he's going out there because he can race from Tuesday to Sunday. He did that last year, I think. Uh, he, I think his dad, he, him and his dad went out there for like three weeks last year, but yeah. he's yeah. Been by himself for like three months this year. Really? Yeah. He's staying with uh, Aki, I think he said. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, boy. it's weird. You know, you, there's, there's a lot of transplants that have come from that Phoenix area. You've got um, obviously Ricky and, and Tim. Who, who are probably the most recognizable guys that come from the Phoenix area yeah. up here. But then you got Alves who's running a racetrack. Yep. You know, you got you've got uh, the Hibden kid from from basically Pahrump. Pahrump, um yeah. moved up into Fargo. He's up there with yeah. with um, the Arnesons. Uh, and then you know you got all these California guys like Flippo's racing in Marshalltown on Friday night. Yeah, they. Moved, I mean, they the whole family picked they up uprooted. from from uh, there to. Uh, yeah, Lake, Heckman. Heckman. Riley Heck. Simmons moved here. Riley too, Simmons, yeah. Simmons, yeah. Heckman. Cody Laney got a place out there now. Yeah, and, you, you know, know Ethan one, was probably one, one of the one worst. I, I would say living now. The one I ran into was actually out here looking for a place. Oh, I know who you're talking about because I seen him Friday. Yes, you did. Yes, Brown. Nope. They already got a place out here. They have like uh, hundred brothers out moving here. now. Oh yeah. Browns have like a hundred places out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called own, DRC Rentals in Marshalltown. I think they own half of Marshalltown now. <laughs> so who'd you run into, Jim? Now I'm curious. Um, or is it not fit it's for, a legend not of California for, racing. It's, yeah, it is a legend. Let's put it like that. And he has what a son. He, he has a son that was uh he could not be a Gordon or could not be a Jordan. Wow. I yes. don't like this game. I don't like this game either. <laughs> Jim, we I'm ran into Randy game. McDaniel, didn't we? Oh, yes, okay. we did. Yeah. Oh, well, why would Ryan move here? Because, I can't because, imagine. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Where, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why Ryan would want to move here, but 
How's Randy doing? Good. He'd Real seen good. him and Lori. They were, uh, I mean, Lori was looking exquisite as ever. And Randy was looking Randy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, hey, they're wanting to come move to the Midwest. I mean, Ryan's got a reason. I mean, he's. Randy and Lori want to come too? Oh, Randy wants Randy's. I figured Randy, Ryan Randy's would, retirement but... is to get out of California. He'll, he'll tell you <laughs> my retirement plan: leave California. I think. I think that's the. Everyone. I think that's everyone's plan. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. I think the 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 migration of California or West Coast racers to the Midwest is is a really good example yeah. of of the quality of racing that we are fortunate to see all across the United States when it comes to IMCA mod racing or sport mod racing, even stock car racing, uh, any of our class, you know, the racer can pick up his stuff and go, mm-hmm. you know, halfway yep. across the United States and throw his race car on a racetrack that he's not familiar with and be competitive. You know, I, I it's one of the, I think one of the, the main things that, that why racers get into IMCA. And I also think it's one of the biggest benefits of being a part of an association like IMCA is that, Again, the consistency of our rules, not changing, um, you know, not changing rules because of the geographic location of the track where it's warmer or it's colder and the, the dirt composition and mm-hmm. tire rules and all these other weird things that you see change regionally that we see change in non IMCA racing. I don't really think that has to occur. And I think, I think when you see guys like that, that come out here and they run really well, it says a lot. It just kind of proves the point, you know, and, and then you got guys that, you know, you look at Ethan Dotson, you know, he's probably one of the first guys from California that's come out here a lot. Yeah. Um, the last few years, you know, and now he's running, you know, I saw he won a late model, super late model race somewhere mm-hmm. the other day, you know, he's racing for, I think Arpin down at, yep. at Lone yep. Bro, Longhorn. whatever it is, Longhorn. Um, and doing really well running, you know, open comp mod racing and super late models and stuff like that, you know, and he goes he was back. In, he was in Cocopa with his IMC mod. Right. Yep. And he, he goes back to his IMCA car and racing his IMCA stuff. Cause most of those guys have two cars that are doing that. It's not the same car. Um, and it runs very well. You know, it's, I think it's cool. You know what they cool. say about the IMCA rules? What? There is no alternative. There is no alternative. Who says that? Oh, that's a good slogan. <laughs> you well, Jim that says up. Even I agree. That's Jim a good slogan. Jim says it every chance he gets. One of the one of the transplants is coming back to race a stock car next this, or tomorrow. That's Flippo. He's coming out to drive a stock car for the week. I wonder what they do. You know, we should get a guy like Flippo on on the show because yeah. he's got to wear the fire suit. Though. He got yeah. yeah he's got to wear the Woody fire suit. suit. To you know, a guy like that can tell you what, why he did it, but you know what you know. Also, what's he do for a living? You know, I mean, those are the things that I find myself right. really interested in, you know, because, you know, his car looks the same as it does as it did last year at Super Nationals. You know, he went back home and came back and whenever he moved out here, mm-hmm. he's got in Marshalltown, you know, but I, I had heard at Super National, yeah. I think, that he had, was moving at about that time. Yeah, last year. yeah, because they get the jo- his dad got the job offer um, at Super Nationals. He actually went up to Clear Lake and interviewed that during Super Nationals, accepted a position, and literally – Went home and started packing to move out here. Wow. And then knew that, hey, we're going to race Friday at Marshalltown, Saturday at Boone. That's that crazy. Was, that was, you know, to, to do that. Like you said, you just pick your car up. It's legal in yeah. every state that sanctions IMs. You know, it, the rules Take it anywhere. Change, yeah. go wherever. And it's competitive. At least they prove it to be competitive. A lot of those guys that oh, move. Yeah, was, wow. A lot of those guys that move from the West Coast, they've already established themselves as successful drivers, too, out there. So I think yeah. that makes the transition yeah. a little bit easier. But, yeah, they've got res- good resumes. Yep. I'm I think they do a lot of – I think they transplant a lot of the times because they can go race, you know, four or five times a week if they want to. But also, you know, we get – it's super hot out here. It's a different heat than you guys have. You guys oh. have humidity. We have that dry – heat you know the the last few years the summers have been brutal i mean i think we had a stretch last year where it was like 20 something days in a row we were over 100 degrees and it just you know it's very hard for us to race any later than we do and and then also having no fans in the stands like we're just up against it and so these guys are going out there and they'll leave in you know july August so they can go back there and run for a couple of months before supers and then they come back right after the nationals and then hit all the open shows out here after. 
Yeah, a lot of curfews out there, Doug. Do the tracks. Yeah, most curfews? of the most of the tracks are either ten o'clock or eleven o'clock. Which is not a bad thing. Nope. Right. Which we talked about this subject before. Mm-hmm. You know, it's to me that's not a bad thing. It forces the racetrack to be a little bit more efficient. You know, we're but you've got the heat issue. Here. We're eleven o'clock here, but like last weekend we didn't finish till eleven twenty just because we had so many cars. I had four red flags. Uh have a you know, car flip over. I had one car stuck in a fence. I had one car dukes of hazard it out the fence. So <laughs> It just seemed like we lost an hour of the night with that. stuff. Do you get fined if you do that? If you go I haven't. Interview? Knock on wood. Uh, two two years ago, we had an open wheel show in October, or an open show with the IMCA guys. I'm sure you remember the big brawl that we had with the Dotsons and the Johnsons. Mm-hmm. The Bakersfield guys brought their stuff here, but uh, we finished that night at like 1.15 in the morning. And I'm in the middle of town, and I thought for sure we were going to get busted. And uh, Cops were coming? And we didn't. <laughs> the older I get, the more I embrace a curfew, though. Me too. I like Correct. being done at a good time. I, I do, time. too. I hate being here late. It yes. sucks. Friday night's 10 o'clock. It better be done. Not a, you don't have a curfew, though, do you? I have a, self inf- I have a self-inflicted curfew. Like me. We oh, shoot for 10 o'clock <clears throat> is what we want to be done. With everything, we start racing at seven, try and have three hour show and be done at ten. The problem with Jerry show, it's ten o'clock Pacific time. <laughs> <laughs> Most of Jerry's problems are self inflicted. Yes. So. Jackass. <laughs> I hope that was for Brad, are you gonna be returning to uh, Reno in December? Are you gonna keep sending Jim out? Oh, it's I don't know. Why do you miss me? The, it's hard to get stuff done with IMCA when you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we we had a meeting. We had a meeting. How that guy? We had a meeting. How that turn out? Yeah, it turned out well. Turned out well. Got stuff done. (laughs) Speaking of getting stuff done, how'd your basketball season end? Uh, for high school? Yeah, we were all right. We missed it. uh, Missed it by one game for the playoffs. But I only had two seniors this year, so probably the officials. I'll take it. You coach basketball too. Yeah, I coach high school basketball varsity with uh, one oh, of my shit. good friends I went to school with. I never knew that. So you deal with high school kids during basketball season? This is a, car it's a perfect, or... For me, it's a perfect scenario because I go from race season is from March to November out here, and basketball is from middle of October to March. Oh, so wow. uh, by the time I'm done with the kids, I go right into race season, and when I'm done with the race guys, I'm going into basketball. See, this is our get to know Doug Lock. How do you how do you deal with the okay? Doug, I never knew that. I mean, I I officiate varsity. Not before. well, but he officiates yeah, not well, varsity. But I do. <laughs> how do you? I mean, I know how I deal with parents. I just kick them out of the damn gym. But how, how do you deal with that parent that's like, Jimmy needs to play more. He needs your star player, Coach Lockwood. You better get your head out of your ass and figure this out. Or we're There's going always, to we're, we're going to enroll somewhere. somewhere else. There's always one parent that, you know, you deal with that, but we have parent meetings at the beginning of the year and, you know, we have processes that they're supposed to go through and the, the kids are supposed to come to us first. And then if they don't go anywhere, then it's a parent meeting. And, but in high school basketball, it's not city league. It's, it's, a, it's not a, it's not a requirement to be played, you know, it's earned. And uh, if you don't earn your time and don't work, your ass off in practice you're not going to end up on the court have you ever told off have you ever gotten into a into a heated discussion with an official or told one off if you haven't we are willing to offer up jerry right now without penalty if you want to go off like when i'm coaching or playing because when i played at my school i have the i have this it goes like it goes like this doug come on that was a charge it wasn't a block what are you looking at ref yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I had uh, I got the school record for technicals and ejections my freshman year, so I definitely <laughs> was. And now you're a race promoter. I'm afraid oh, yeah. of telling the refs what I thought wow. about them. So oh, that's pretty cool. But, right but as you learn, as you coach, you know you don't want to you don't want to push the issue with the refs to to change the game or you know have it affect the outcome of of their work on the the court so you try to just deal with it and uh you know that they're 
they're human and they make mistakes. And I think the biggest thing with the refs out here, as long as you can get them to communicate with you, you know, and that's the biggest thing, but there's such a shortage of referees right okay. now that you get not very good ones. A lot of the time. Now they have that same shortage in Iowa. Yeah. I mean, it's nationwide. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're talking about- what, I, I mean, I personally wouldn't want to ref. I'd rather coach because I mean, it's just brutal. Parents are brutal, fans are brutal. It's just it's. Social I feel like it's that way in racing that. right now. My drivers' meeting when I start tomorrow. I mean, my word's going to be respect. You know, if you guys respect each other for the week, we'll all make it out of here. If you don't respect it, then it's going to be a long week for all of us. I think social media is doing a lot of that. I think social media is changing the the way people act. You know, hundred percent, and how they interact. 100%. I don't, I don't know how exactly how to explain it, but it it just seems to me like people are a lot more. I'm entitled, and you're going to listen. And my 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 word is the best. And well, if you talk like that face to face with somebody, you might get your ass kicked. But you feel comfortable doing it online because there are no repercussions. You might get kicked out of a group. Right. You might get kicked out of somewhere. Yeah. You'll go find another one where you can run your mouth. So then they find come, people to agree with you. I would agree. And then they then they come to the races and they get you know they found in violation right. of whatever on the race car, whether it be before they race or during the races or even after they race. And you know it's like well. Some people just have the attitude at times. Right. It's just like, you can't tell me what to do. And it's just yeah. like, I think a lot of the times, though, it's like, you, weird. you get yeah. it to where we're know. all being told what to do. All, and, and the majority of our lives, in, in some aspect uh, or another, almost every day, you know. So mm-hmm. it's not like people aren't ever telling people what, what they can and can't do. You know, people will come to the racetrack, you know, and they'll have a good experience. And, you know, it was a good night. Races were over at 10. Good car count. Had a great time. And you won't read a word about it. Yeah. Next week, you'll have one thing go wrong, and you'll have people messaging you and calling you and posting up things on the internet. And it's like, where was that when everything went well? It's like, it's got to be a two way street. And the problem yeah. with social media is only a one way street. What well, if people do have questions too, or you know, concerns, or they're upset at a racetrack? A lot of times, they won't even approach or try to diffuse or, or resolve a situation. They'd rather post to social media to stir things up, to get people in their yeah. corner without really looking for answers. They just want to be heard, and they don't necessarily go about that in the yeah. most tactful of ways. Yeah, We put a thing in our rule book this year about social media and the drivers and their posts. Of, Is that like a sign you know, in the they pits? They held accountable <laughs> for it. You know? just, Is that like a sign in the pits? Hey, it's just like a sign in the pants. It comes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Well, again, <laughs> we want to th- thank you, Doug, for taking the time to sit down with us for a half hour today. And, you know, and hope- thank you for putting that tour together out there. It's, it's a yeah. great deal out there. I mean, I, I think it, it, you know, it really helps keep IMC in the forefront out there. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize the work that goes into to putting that together to try to get all the tracks on the same page and line up sponsors it's tough. And, and everything like that. It's it's not it's not easy. And if you're not it's going not out easy there. doing that and having your own track during the week, like I was actually saying how much easier this year is being the second race than being like the last race because there's so much you have to do coming up to it. Well, now I can be here and I only miss one day. And then get back into it, run our track, and then go finish the rest of the tour. Yep. And all five nights, I think, are broadcast on IMCA TV. So if you don't yep. make the trip to California, haven't seen any circle track racing in California, this is a perfect time to check it out. Dave's on his way out there, I think. He left what, yep. last week? Yeah, so probably. If he was driving, he'd have left two months ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he should be. I think he gets into uh, flies in today. And yeah. He'll be out there. To, but he probably won't be there till about driver's meeting tomorrow. He's flying? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Him and Jim work on the same schedule. Right? Before hot. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, right Jim won't hot. come out here for this, though. I haven't figured out why. <laughs> just, but he won't ever come out here for it. Jim Dave's gets the there. Reno shift. Yeah. Yeah. He only goes to Reno because he knows someone else doesn't go there. <laughs> 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 oh. Might have to bring Jim some peas. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wrap it up again. Want to want to thank you, Doug. Hopefully, everything goes well the next five nights. We're going to be watching on IMCA TV. Yes. Those of that are out there. All right. Well, sure hopefully, you guys tune in. It's a good week. Hopefully, we 
put on a good show and, you know, we don't keep you guys up too late so you can watch some racing. Perfect, sir. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thanks, Doug. Yep. And that's mods, stock cars, and sport mods. I think all five nights out there. So it should be good yep. shows all, pretty awesome. all week long. Yeah, it's weird. You go back maybe 10 years ago and you'd be like, you know, to say that we'd be having a, a, a stock car or sport mod tour in the state of California and for five straight nights it'd be crazy. People would think you're crazy, but you know, here we are. You, know, you can just see how the sport never stays the same. Well, things always change, you know, and, and out there, you know, the stock cars getting a little bit more and more mm-hmm. traction. Yeah. You know, some of the some of the sanctions we've picked up in the Pacific Northwest have helped us out there a little bit. Got some stock cars going up in that area. Sport mods have you know, I said it years ago, when they add sport mods in California, it'll be one of our biggest classes out there just because I, th- I think that that th- this kind of goes back to why people move out of that state. You know, and this is my perspective on the whole situation, and that is it's expensive to live in California. Everything oh, yeah. you do in California is expensive compared to Iowa, in like, my opinion. Yeah, it's like two or three right. times what we spend here. So when you get living is right. crazy out So there. when you give guys a little bit of an opportunity – to race for something that's a less expensive, I think you're just, they're naturally going to migrate to it. And we've seen some very excellent um, sport mod car counts out there, some very excellent sport mod racers out there, um, and really good participation, you know, in that division. So nothing to do with sport mods out in California, in my, in my opinion, really surprises, surprises me based on what the landscape of the racing has been for us for many years mm-hmm. out there. But mod racing is still, you know, you go way back to when mod racing got started and they had the barnstorming days and they did swings up Calif- up through California when Keith and, and my mother did some of that stuff. And I still have people, you know, I, I go to Watsonville. I've been out there. It's been two years now. I have people in Watsonville say, hey, say, say hi to your mom for me. And I'm like, my mom? You know, I mean, <laughs> I can't remember the last time my mom's been to the races in California, but there's people out there involved in they racing remember that, have, that remember it, mm-hmm. you know. And it's things like that, the things that, that, that laid the groundwork for why mod racing, I think, it got so popular out there. And now you look at what Doug's doing out there with, with, with his tour and the efforts that they make, and it just helps. It just helps make racing better out there. And, you know, it's cool to be a part of that. It really is. I wish, kind of wish I was going out there. It, those, I'm not kidding. The best Mexican food I, I, I eat anywhere <laughs> in the United States. They bring a lot to choose from. Is in there. California. Yeah. Yeah, my we went to uh, in Tulare when I was out there a couple of years ago with Virginia. We we ate lunch at this at this Mexican restaurant. It was literally like two blocks um, south of the racetrack. Yeah, and <laughs> we went with uh, Scott Woodhouse at the time. Scott, I, I, you know, I called him on the way. I was like, "Hey, where's the best place to eat Mexican uh, in Tulare?" He's he told me there. Place. He told me where he goes. I'm like, "Okay." So I went there. He sh- he said, "Hey, I'll meet you." Okay, no problem. So he met me there, and we I ordered the I ordered the seafood enchiladas. I love seafood enchiladas too, and I like tacos, but I like seafood enchiladas as well. And mm. Doug's like, I, or not Doug, sorry, Scott's like, I've never had that. I think I'm. I think I'm going to get that. So he ordered it, and he goes, this is, I can't believe I've never ordered this. He, I got a random picture from him a few months ago, just a plate of seafood enchiladas at this, <laughs> at this Mexican restaurant. Almost two years later, he's, he's still eating them, you know. And so um, I just, I don't know, little things like that. The things you, the, the, the things outside of racing make, makes it really fun, I think, for, for Dave and myself and Jim and, any anybody who's officiating and goes on the road, you guys are going on the road. Not as Ryan doesn't as much as the rest of us, but oh, I mean that was like you know when we went. To it's all those little fun yeah, things that make that, traveling, yeah. it make traveling yeah. interesting. You know, watch and, the highlights back there. You know when Nate and I or not or Garrett and I go out fishing. Byron, we went to just different places yeah. in Florida. It's the, you know, yeah, it's some. It's like people at Super Nationals. You know they'll go to the ledges or they'll go ride the train mm-hmm. there in Boone or they'll go do. Look at Iowa, go over to Iowa State or just find something to do during the day that when they're not racing, just go out and make it, make it a memory and an experience of the of yep. your trip. One of my favorite could- Lockwood stories was, was you know, I was watching, I don't know if it was on the America's Bloopers or something, it was, it was on a television show 
where the, a kid's racing one of those little micro sprints, yeah. little, little tiny ones with the wing on it. Oh, he's the guy that caught that he's one. He's the isn't guy it? that caught yeah. that. I forgot about that. It goes buzzing off the racetrack. Out there at that the barn. They I call think, it. Yeah. yeah, and it's through going through the pit area like the throttle stuck on mm-hmm. it. That's exactly and, what happened. And he was officiating. He might have been doing lineups at the time. He was on the infield or something because. And he grabs that. He catches that thing by the wing. Holy cow. As it buzzes by him, and it pulls a wheelie and spins around in like a couple of donuts, and he stops it. But he saved wow. it. I mean, because the next the next thing was into a crowd of people. Yeah, and you, I watched it on television. If <gasps> I remember correctly, I'm like, I th- I think I know who that is. <laughs> is that really? I text him. Is that really? He's like, Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I remember when that hit the you know hit social media or whatever. It was it pretty was, funny. I was it, like, you can Google it. It's there. It was like, holy. Jeez, because I mean, he does. It's like he just grabs it like it was not, no big thing. Grabs, grabs his wing. wing. And he, like, and he's holding his hand and he's going like this. And it must, I think it cut his finger or something when he grabbed it. But not only is he a promoter, my, a series director, a varsity basketball coach, but he is a local hero. He's a hero. Saved hundreds. What else do you guys want to talk about? Micro sprint shortstop. Yes. We've been on for 40 minutes. Do you have an agenda? I, you know, I don't. <laughs> I got home. You got that. That was a joke. Huh? You got... <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. Correct. <laughs> I got home last night at one fifty. Well, this morning at one fifteen in the morning from Orlando. So Orlando. I pried myself out of bed and came to work today. So I, no, I'm I'm not very prepared. But I do have some stuff we can talk about. If you well, guys we had a lot listen, of great racing happening. Listen you know, to me talk. Had, uh, two racetracks up there in South Dakota under new promoters. You know, Chase yep. and Shelby Correct. open interstate. Yep. Yep. Wayne Becker, uh, Wayne and Amy had, had a Park great Jefferson. O- opening night there at Park Jefferson. Uh, yep. Uh, Roger had a spectacular rollover contest at uh, <laughs> Eagle. I, I, I watched that on IMC TV Saturday night. Was, uh, sp- speaking of promoters and track rollover, I mean, it's 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 a lot like race car rollover. You you you, you have two racetracks that we've sanctioned for quite a few years, Interstate for a, forever. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm always going to call it Interstate. I, just, even when it was Raceway Park, right. it was still Park, Interstate. Yep. It's stuck interstate. in my head as Interstate. Yeah. It's been named a few different things as the promoters change. But, um, you know, that's a facility that I have never been to, to the races there. I've been there because I've been to Park Jefferson on – numerous occasions but i've never been on a sunday night to raceway park and they're right across the street from each other but they both those facilities were operated by different promoters last year yep you know and chase chase come in this year and 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 is running a raceway and then you've got wayne at, at at park jefferson and both had pretty sounds like pretty good opening nights yeah uh, for for both those guys well attended it's just facilities that racers support you know it's just it's just one of th- that particular locate that particular situation, I guess I would say, two racetracks across the street from each other. It's just not normal. It's just not. Yeah, I mean, they're literally within. It's not normal. I mean, f- just it's just a, a gravel road separates them. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, you occasionally hear of tracks in the same community, the same city, yeah. but not small might town be like Midwest three miles apart across the street from each. other. I mean, how big is Jefferson, South Dakota? Two racetracks. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's two racetracks, 14 casinos, yeah. and 17 firework yeah. stands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it. crazy. I mean, they're just, you pull off the highway and there's the two racetracks sit. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's so unique. And they, and, you know, again, different promoters, but they survive. You know, that mm-hmm. in itself, you get two racetracks that are surviving, you know, which is, um, says a lot as well. It must have some support. From somebody up there, from the fans, from the racers. Oh, it does. I mean, it's been it's been supported dramatically a lot of times, but it's been supported. You know, there was it, it was funny. I was listen. Chase got his um he got his uh, inaugural. Uh, I'm going to stand here and tell you what I think of your program from a guide the other night. And I just was. He goes, yeah. Every week we come out here, it's the same thing every week. And I go, this is only the second, second night week. And it's only their second race ever promoting, and I just shook my head and I go, "That guy's really pra- he's really passionate about what he's talking about, but you're not realizing that it's only their second night, or it's only the second, or it's only the first night of racing if it's a new promoter somewhere. It's like, oh, I knew it'd be like this, just like last year. I wasn't here last year. <laughs> yep." Some of those people just like to hear themselves complain, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If some I complained do. as yeah. much as some of those people, I'd probably find a new hobby. Misery loves <laughs> company. It does. It does. Birds of a feather flock together. Yes, they do. 
Let's talk stock car stuff for a little bit. We were talking oh, stock right. cars. Ooh. Did you have some pictures to show? I, mean, do I do. Show and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell. Show Welcome to the IMC TV box. podcast, the box of bad ideas, where we show and tell you things you should and should not do. Yes, we need to have Carson get us a sponsor. Yeah, we'll try to. <laughs> box of bad ideas. Yeah, want, yeah, if you want to sponsor the back, box of bad ideas, call Carson. Call Carson. David sent me some podcast topics, and, and one he has mentioned consistently is rear springs on stock cars. You know, the again, the stock car division is getting more and more popular. We got in sanctions in areas where we haven't been for many years. So you got car builders in those areas as well, you know, and then you get into everybody interpreting the rules as they interpret them, not necessarily as we interpret, yes, how we interpret them. Or we enforce it. So it's always good to just kind of revisit the subjects, even though I think at times the subjects are – um, we've got it resolved. It, it like again, it just just like like tracks that switch promoters. You have race cars that switch owners or drivers, and you and, and you get a new guy yeah. in the sport. And he, he 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 doesn't he hasn't been around for some of the stuff that we've went through, and the the issues just start to revolve. Uh, springs in the back of a stock car is one that Dave said we really need to make sure we mention. So uh, I don't think we need to read the rule necessarily, um, but. You know, he's he's quoted the rule, but I wanted to throw some pictures up. Um, I think I am going to read what Dave put. Um, the coil springs may be moved front to back, but center line of the axle tube can be no further forward than the front of the spring or no further back than rear of spring, but spring must be arranged ver vertical left to right. The lower spring purse mu perch must be welded to the axle tube. And another way to explain this is the spring must touch or be over the center line of the axle. Um, that means in our interpretation, the top, the bottom and the top of the spring. And that's where some of this stuff gets real creative. Um, the rear spring cannot be moved left to right. And it must be in the OEM location on the axle tube. Left to right. If that makes sense. I hate reading because I'd rather just talk about it than reading it. So throw the first picture up there if you would. This is the, 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 the first picture that Dave wanted me to discuss. He says, this shows the OEM upper spring seat on a metric G-body frame. It gives you an idea of where the spring belongs in reference to the frame rail. So that's where the top of the spring should sit with, on a, with, a, with a stock car. Go ahead and throw the next one up. And I'm just going to read what Dave wrote about this one. Number two picture shows the spring is a little bit inboard from the OEM location. It also shows the top of the spring is inboard of the bottom of the spring. Neither of these are extreme. This isn't the worst one by any means. There are much, much worse out there. But again, a little bit of movement. Go show the, the third one. Yeah. So this is the wild stuff we start seeing. This picture shows an extreme example of the top of the left rear spring leaning forward. The top of the spring must be over the center line of the axle like the bottom is. I would have thought about This one also has two shock was... mounts on it, which aren't legal. I thought it was crashed. So Dave makes him cut one of those mounts off. See, it's got two shock mounts on it as well. Mm -hmm. Can't have that. This is where we need a telestrator like we've begged for years at Super Nationals. Go ahead and throw the next one up, Nate. Dave's words. Number four has a, long, a lot wrong with it. <laughs> That's all. He, now, then he says, this is just an attempt to circumvent the rule requiring the weight to be mounted to the chassis only. Obviously, that's a weighted lower spring perch. Um, call it what you want, but this is just ballast, and it's not legal like this in a stock car. Um, it's also not welded to the housing. It's bolted. Um, there's a strap wrapping around the axle tube, and it's bolted to the spring seat. It might be floating on the axle or something like that as well. But, again, this is, in Dave's words, this has a lot wrong with it. If you have this on your stock car, you might want to change it. And then the last picture, Nate. This funky lever-looking thing. This mount allows the spring to be moved from center to a rearward position. The reason for pivoting is a mystery. But either way, it's not legal. Um, the lower spring perch must be welded to the axle tube. We have seen some of these. Uh, they've got an adjustable sliding lower perch on them. Um, you know, some chassis manufacturers, have, uh, one in particular, made that. It actually has like three bolt locations in the front of it, like it can be slid forward and backward. 
an IMCA, if we catch you with something like that, you got to weld it in the position where it's supposed to be. You can't just unbolt it and move it back and then go race non-sanctioned and move it forward because they don't care. So, but again, springs, just generally speaking, and you can always watch the video over again and look at the rep pictures that I've got on reference or that we reference here at IMCA. This is kind of the stuff that we we use is when you, you call and ask us questions or you text us or things like that. These are some of the photos you're going to see us using which is a whole nother subject because we always have people, I have people asking me, taking a picture of my race car. And I said, yeah, uh, I take a lot of pictures when I'm at races these days. We all carry a phone in our pocket. It's real easy to do. I, even myself, I'll take pictures of stuff and I'll send it to Dave and say, have you seen something like this? You know, whether it be roofs on modified, sail panels, I mean, all kinds of things. Uh, we try to communicate as much as we can as a group um, in real time as we can when we're at races. And I'm, I'm thankful that Jim and Dave are, are very active in the evenings uh, on the weekends um, it's one of their primary purposes at IMCA is to to be a resource or a service for our tracks and they're also a service to each other we are to each other by sending pictures we take a lot of pictures and send stuff around um, and say hey so you might see a picture of your race car um, on the podcast someday if it's got some issues and we happen to come across it if it's a good example of what shouldn't be done you know, we're not, not trying to. The pictures aren't usually as good as the ones we get from Jerry. But. I've sent you some good ones. You ask for them by name. <laughs> Do I have to sanitize my phone after you send me a picture? No. <laughs> good. Don't send them. <laughs> I'll send them anyway. That's cool. But, yeah, the the taking, shooting pictures of some of the stuff and just, it's they're good examples of of how we can help interpret, I guess, how we interpret the rules and how we enforce them. Because at the end of the day, again, to go back to this, again, we talked about the pod, the social media um, subject. You know, we, we were involved in a couple of D, I was involved in a couple of DQs earlier at the, at the Marshalltown Frostbuster. Yes, stock you cars. were. And of, and of course, the, the question I usually get asked, are you going to disqualify me? That's usually the first thing they ask. Am I disqualified? And it's, I'm, you know, yeah, you are. You're disqualified. You're not going to give me a warning? No, we're not going to give you a warning. So some of these some of these issues are not offenses that are going to get you a warning. We do have some deficiency offenses, but anything that's going to make your car faster or unsafe, give you some sort of an advantage over other competitors, we're going we're gonna to disqualify you. That, and that is the purpose of the sanction. Mm -hmm. That's the, the sanction, purpose of rules. It's, it is the definition of a sanctioning body. So... We write the rules. We enforce the rules. So in these situations, these are just real good. In a division that's getting really, really, it's got a lot of momentum like we've talked about. Um, it's it's good for, for people who are new to stock car racing and even for those who have been racing for a long time and trying to push the rules, you know, like Paul Berger, um, you know, for them to know what, what they can and can't do. Hmm. You don't think Paul Berger would cheat, do you, on purpose? I don't know. Jerry's twin brother. <laughs> I mean, he is my twin brother from another mother. Uh, Maybe he'll listen. Oh, I, if, it, if it comes from Jerry. Yeah, I'll tell him. What else you want to talk about? Enough about rules. That's about eight minutes of rule talk. Yeah. It's but necessary. Sleeping. Yeah. Got to hear that mm. stuff once in a while. The other issue I have people asking well, me what? about is hobby stock tires. Have you had anybody ask you about hobby stock tires? No, have to be round. Yeah, well, availability or what? Yeah, availability. They're, they're apparently they don't make prime wells anymore. Prime wells are pretty popular. Well, prime well is like you, man. You better get them prime wells if you want I'm to be yeah. Shannon Anderson fast. Get them prime Correct. wells. Correct. I prime wells. Are I don't like, even know who makes prime well. Neither do I. So I mean, they're. Yeah. We don't make them. We don't get no money on them. Yeah, we don't have anything to do with them. But yeah. man, we're, what are you gonna do about not being able to get any more prime wells? I'm like, I don't know. Do you want I'm me to sure call Mr. Primewell? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Primewell. Mr. Primewell, this is Brett. Uh, we, we need to work out a we deal. We got to fix can, this problem. Yeah, yeah. We'll work out a deal here so we can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Primewells are not, I mean, that's kind of when I was at the Frostbusters, that was one of the things that was brought up to me a couple times was hobby stock tires not being able to find the 205 Primewell. So well, let's see. It's an, inter it's an interesting subject. Dave and I have talked a little bit about it, and Dave sent me a picture. What, which is, it? I, what is it? It's uh, 205. 
I think the primer was like what was like like a fifty dollar tire or sixty dollar tire was a tire. It was a pretty inexpensive tire, generally speaking, for a hobby stock. What size is a tire? A hobby stock. Now it's, it's now it's two hundred thirteen dollars. Two hundred seventy. Two hundred five seventy. What? 15? R fifteen. Seventy five. Seventy five. R fifteen. But Dave sent me a picture the other day of a three hundred and thirty nine dollar hobby stock tire wow. that a, a racer had referenced as, "Hey, can I use these?" Why would you want to, even if you could? It was a $339 tire. And it's, uh, no, you can't use it. It had a speed rating on it and some other things. But but I don't know what we're going to do about the, again, these issues present themselves, and it makes us as a... I mean, there's, I mean, I'm looking here, and right? I mean, you can go to... You can you, find you can tires. You Walmart and buy a 205-75R15. But I think what the racers liked about the Prime Well is that it was it was fast and it was tough. I think they got some pretty good life out of it. Yeah, all you got to do is when and you look was, at when you look at tires, you just got to look at the and they liked the it. numbers. I mean, the the other, you know, the rating numbers like your load rating and all that stuff. I mean, it'll tell you what the compound of it is. So the search for the replacement prime well is on, <clears throat> according to some of the guys I've talked about. And maybe maybe somebody who's listening could point me in the right direction and email me or shoot me a Facebook message on on what the tire is of choice at this point in time because right now i don't even know prime wells had been what everybody was I mean, racing look at for here. Years. here's a good buy i, I mean, don't care what you're finding on walmart it doesn't mean the racer is going to end up using it a unirol tiger pot you, you can buy a wp2 but will the racer 60, use 65 them? it's 65 000 this is a really tire, good example 113 dollars a tire yeah. this is a really good example of it doesn't it doesn't matter <laughs> It doesn't matter like what it looks like. It doesn't matter necessarily what it costs. Mm-hmm. It th- there's other things that come into play. One being the fact that it wins. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can find a forty two dollar Walmart tire on there, and the hobby stock racers can put on put it on there, and they can go on a racetrack, and it lasts forever. It shoots sparks on dirt. It's so hard, you know, but oh. it gets lapped three times in a twenty lap in a twenty yeah. lap heat feature and the, the racers aren't going to run it you know they're going to migrate to what wins the race and that's why this subject is kind of interesting to see how it plays out because i don't know if we have a a good solution racing tires on hobby stocks is a bad solution we've said that for years yep. why don't you put g60s on them i'm like why don't you get a stock car yeah, why you just why don't I just let you have weight jacks too? And why don't you get a stock car? Yeah. I mean, that's what I say to those. I mean, every one of those things, it's like sport mods, you know. The, the same same thing. Why don't you get them if they want all quick of those change. things? Yeah, exactly. If you want a quick change in your sport mod, get a modified. Buy a modified. Move up a division. I can't afford one of those. Well, why do you think that is? The same you can't afford a modified, but you want a quick change in a sport mod. But you want your sport mod to cost more than a modified. Like three hundred five race savers. Same thing, you know. You know when are you going to do this and when are you going to do that. If if you want that, get a go get a four ten. Yeah, race your brains out. You know, there's divisions that have those rules that you can correct. use. correct correct. So if you, you want that, you, we usually they don't you, ask French you know, that question. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the option is they know better. <laughs> why can't we they know have better? This? Well, because this div, this div, this div, this division has it. Just move up. Yeah, well, I can't afford it. But you I, want no, you, it's more like I can't win in that division. Hmm. I've heard that all before. the above sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's D. All I still want to race a race saver, just for the record. I told a guy that this weekend. You had the shot. Roger had one for you. That was like five years ago. I yeah. bet he could come up with one. I bet you. I could. bet he'd still let you. I bet you could probably if you went to Eagle on Saturday. I bet they'd put you in one. I want. I just want to. I just want to buy one and just go out to out here in the track in town out here in Vinton. And when Corey has practice days, it just I just want to practice by myself. I don't know what other, other sprint cars out there with me. Is that okay? Sign in under somebody, some pseudonym. You I don't, don't care want if to people hit, know oh. who I am because I still think I'll be the fastest car on the track. As well, long as there's, there as long yourself. as there's no other yeah, sprint cars you out there. Are the fastest car on the track. I know I can beat a sport compact are with you, a sprint car. Wait a minute, are you allowed a legal to race? One. It? Are you allowed to race in Vinton? Is your is your suspension? I thought, yeah, I thought you were like lifetime suspended no. from the that that that, that suspension got lifted with the promoter. Gotcha. Oh, okay. That was so now idea. you can't race at Eldora. No, that was my, that was my interpretation. <laughs> I'm like everybody else. I have my own interpretation. 
What about upcoming races? What about them? What do we got? What do you have? What do you got? What do you have? You're the schedule guy usually. Nate, well, don't I, you have the dirt, 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 d- duel? The dirt duel. The dirt duel. Stuart. 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 Stuart on Sunday. Drive line. Dirt duel. I went to Stuart three the, times last year, maybe four. The annual dirt duel on presented Sunday. by Dramatic Driveline. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Who's been a good supporter of IMCA Racing, too, I must say. Yes, he has. Yes. He really has. And as usual, they're putting up 2000 to win for the stock cars. It's going to be 1000 to win for the Modifieds. Um, Some 1000 to win for the Sport Mods. That's first race of the year at Stewart. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes. Due to the weather. Mike's yeah. first race. They haven't even raced in town here yet. I think they race the Man. following Wednesday, too, don't they, at Stewart? Yeah. I think they race yeah. twice next week. Mm-hmm. I think the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer around here. What, 70s, high 70s? Forecast looks better as 80s. far as warmth, but I there's will, some I will spotty be, rain. I'll be happy when the wind stops. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been blowing for four or five years yeah, now. It, it has. I don't think it's going to stop. I mean, stop. like it is today. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, ridiculous. it's 40 mile an hour. If it's any constellation, it was like that in Florida yesterday, and it's like that in North Carolina last night, and it's like that here today. So it's so windy wherever it's you windy go. windy everywhere. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you're the common denominator. Do we, see, do we see a comma denominator? No, I don't. So we got we got that on Sunday night at Stewart. Then Monday is the annual, what is it, the, the Clay stock County car Stock special? Car Shootout or something, I think. Yeah, it spring. I think it's a spring, spring shootout. shootout or something like that. That's yep. their opener, too, up in Spencer. Yes, yep. it is. Yep. That's once again an annual race they've had up there. It does Trent, very, very well. Trent's got, them, got that place rolling. Trent has done a very good job with Spencer. He really he's done has. a very good job every place he's been. Yeah. We, he, what, he's at Alta? Alta, right? Alta. Hey, you yep. got it Alta. right for the first time. It's God, it's Alta. not Alta. It's, it's still Alta, Alta but I said Alta. 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 Brit. But Alta Brit. and Brit. Brit. Tra- Transit Brit, Alta, and Spencer. Spencer. Been doing a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Why on the world one person would want to run three racetracks? He's young. That me. far He's young. away from oh. each other. He needs to get his brain checked, but he's doing that a good job. It comes with age. It, it, it does. You don't Slow see Mike Van Genren running more than one racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess you really do though. Wait, is yeah, he runs Bristol. <laughs> is that a thing? Uh, give Mike shit. Yeah, they had, they, had, they had they had a pretty good truck crash no. down there. Those pickup trucks. You see that on the I Facebook? did see that on Facebook. Like, like yeah. Seventeen truck crash. It looked just like that crash that happened yeah. in Super Nationals with the hobby stocks. That thing about jump the fence. I thought he was yeah. going in the flag stand. It was one of those ones where one rolls and the other one it launches off over, it, launches it. A pogo but stick or whatever. I think uh, you know. Speaking of Mike, we got Independence now. Him and Dana. Mm-hmm. They open and they open Monday. They they've had their first yep. couple nights. Monday, been, yeah, yeah. Their Saturday weathered nights out, have been so, weathered out. Yeah, so they're yep. the combo of Saturday night and Monday nights in Independence. Yep. Who'd have thunk that? Twenty years ago, I would never thought that either. Especially Independence, I'll be curious to see. Yeah. I've been been around here forever. Yep. People in Independence have always been set in their ways yep. and very against change, which is probably common in racing, regardless. But yeah, I think it'll go over better than than they may realize. Pe- people freaked out a few years ago. I remember when they ran their fair race on a Wednesday and didn't right. run it on Sunday, Saturday. They've always ran right. their, their Saturday fair race. They moved it to Wednesday, and people freaked out on that. But it was a it yep. it turned out being working out very well, to be quite honest. So. Nothing stays the same. Nope. So you got to give Mike good. and Dana some props for, for you know, coming in independence, um, and trying to, trying to make it work, trying to do right. something to make it to make it better. Like Jim, you and I have always said, you know, one of the worst things you can say is, "Well, we've always done it this way," Correct. and that doesn't yeah. necessarily equate to success. You know, Correct. it can become stagnant, set in your ways, yep. and it doesn't always work. You know, I mean, Beaver Dam up in Wisconsin, yeah. Tuesday nights. You know, that first week I was up there, you know, I had 100 cars. That was a stellar show. Great show. That yeah. was a great show. What a facility. I think we talked about it, but what a facility that place is. I think anymore in the, in, in the, in the age of all the stuff, you got to think outside the box on, 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 on racing in general because there is, you know, there's so many other things. Like you went to – dance and cheerleading competition then there's now it's into kids softball and ba- baseball there are so many more kids so many activities things that people do that you almost yeah. have to watch those schedules and be like okay yeah 
when can when can we fit a race in here somewhere? Well, we can't. Well, gosh, we could go to a Tuesday night. And there's a race. Well, but that race is three hours away, so I guess we're not going to go to the races this week. Well, but you know, we we talked about this guy earlier, Wayne Becker, and he's gone into Park Jefferson, and you know, he tore out basically the spectator parking and put it in a campground. Um, you know, he's had some other interesting ideas that that I think once again there is no bad idea. You know, we'll find out. Time will yeah. tell if it works. But he just gets the shit beat out of him on uh, Facebook because that's not the way it's always been done. Well, see, if the people who are bitching about the, the Park Jefferson deal up there want to go back to the way it was always done, you go talk to guys like when Ricky Racer started racing back in the, in the 80s, 80s and 90s. <clears throat> that was in 1980s, right? Yes, not yes, the 1880s? Yes. I mean, he is pretty old, but he's not. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> so you 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 pitted on the back straight away. So, that, I mean, they brought that back. Yeah. You because know, people were, that was a change when, when Adam moved it out to the, yeah. but it was, like Adam said, he goes, I didn't have a choice. I was going to open. And he said, that was all a mud hole back there. So I just, I had to create a pit area and it worked. So I left it there. Uh but you, I mean, you hear the stories from them people up there. I remember races get over at ten thirty. We wouldn't leave till four in the morning because man, they'd have a. We'd go to the bar and sit up there in the bar and this and that and this and that, and then they'd say there'd be people come from you know people knew when the races got over in Sioux City that maybe didn't want to go to the races, but their buddies were out there at the bar drinking or out there underneath the grandstands. They'd come out. Bar stayed and, open till two o'clock. You know, I mean, he's. When, when when somebody, when, that, when, yeah, when somebody says up there, well, that ain't the way we've always done it, that's the way they always did it. You just forgot because you didn't grow up in that generation. And, and once again, Wayne's got that bar open again. In fact, I think last Friday he had a concert he, there. 25? I think he told me he had like 2,000 people there for a concert. Yeah, and I mean, it's 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 a, it's a bar. I mean, he's got oh, you yeah. know, foosball tables, pool tables in there now, and but once again, I mean, you know, it just seems like a lot of the things he comes up with just because there's something new, everybody just starts hating. And what? that's just crazy. I mean, They've got to you know, Wayne, Wayne stepped up or that track probably wouldn't be open right now. Right. Just yeah, like you, Chase yeah. and Shelby did across the street. It would be bare right now. Well, you, people say this is the way it always used to be. How many promoters ago was that? There's a reason that there's, you know, the tracks have mm -hmm. a turnover in management. I mean, you've got to be willing uh, to listen to the ideas as someone who wants to breathe life into a place with something new and something fresh. Give people time. Give them a chance. It's right. May It's May 2nd. If you're bitching about racing now, you're not going to have a good year. <laughs> you're just not going to have a good year if you're already <laughs> pissed off at the world. That's the same with the people that, are, that, that complain about early season cancellations because the weather has been poor. I saw something on the Benton County page where a guy posted, I remember when people used to man up and they'd dress warm, they'd do this, they'd do that. I remember when the season didn't start till the middle of May. You know, remember, times have changed. You know, I remember that, when it was Memorial Day to Labor Day. Yeah. That was it. Mother's Day to Labor Day. Yep. Yeah, yeah, when you remember racing in the snow, you weren't racing in May. Yeah, yeah I think there's only you one. You weren't racing in April. I think there's only one, there's one track that I can think of that has always stayed with the same start date, um, and that's Houston's. It's always Mother's Day. Nothing yep. before. Yeah. It always starts on Mother's Day. And it's everybody up there knows that. Super, oh, super nationals, nationals always starts that, Labor Day. <clears throat> super nationals used to always start the weekend after Labor Day because mm -hmm. it, it was racing only, from it was only to Labor Day. Yeah. So the, the the why the super nationals is where it is and the schedule is because that used to be the end of the season. Yeah, was the weekend after Labor Day, and so you know we've you know it's just pushed. It got so big, it's pushed it into Labor Day, which is a whole another discussion, but. Originally, that's how the, the, the we have people ask, why don't you have Super Nationals in October? Why are you running it? When the season's over. When the season's over, why aren't you running it in, in, in October? Why are you running it in September and making us not race or no have no point races for a, a week? You know, like It's because when it was originally done, that's how it was done. Right. Everything else yeah. got pushed behind it. It wasn't that the Super Nationals got put. Yeah, I mean, I remember it. when Super Nationals. So, back but things when, change. Yeah. If you raced anything past the second week of September when I was a kid, you were, I mean, people thought you were, <laughs> I remember my dad go, he would said, <laughs> those guys are idiots racing after that. I'm like, well, now we look back and it's like we could race in Iowa till November. Well, do we solve any of the world's racing problems? 
Probably created a few. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. I didn't know there was really any problems other than until I looked at the pictures. Yeah. California Clash starts tomorrow. Yeah. Or on IMCA TV. How about the date? Because sometimes this doesn't oh, come out for a couple days. May 3rd. Wednesday, May 3rd. Wednesday, May 3rd. So you may or may not be. So three, four, five, six, and 7. In Antioch, is that what he said? Yep. Yeah, Antioch, Antioch is where it starts. Is there a schedule there you can pop up on the screen, Nate? On IMCA TV. So it's Antioch so on they have Wednesday. Some races it's this weekend. You can pick up here on watch. Thursday. Yeah, right. Hanford, Tulare. Hanford, Tulare, and Bakersfield through yep. Sunday. Yep. It's a lot of racing on the Yeah, where is the, the I am, where's the IMCA TV schedule? <sighs> Nate's been working on that, but he's he's also been he's been working he he's he's Is your wife pregnant again, Nate? Or what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Any updates? Actually he's working on his stamina. He's been riding his Peloton. He's been riding his yes. Peloton. He's been riding his bike and has lost his oh, you have ice Jeez. water now. I've successfully ice uh, You've, uh, melted this ice as that well. That was a brick of uh, ice before when we started this. So. Yeah. So, yeah, don't forget, if you can't make it out to IMC or any IMC races, you can buy them on IMCA TV or maybe replay. You yeah. have no access at that night, so you can buy the replay pass for 30 days. And that money goes back into the yeah. portion of that money goes back into the pockets of racers that race at those racetracks that are broadcast on IMCA TV. Yeah, the IMC replay is is a great value. We have a lot of stock car races specials that will be shown on the on the replay. It's a it's a great value for mm-hmm. yeah, if you don't be able to catch up live. on all the racing. Yeah, maybe you can't be there live. You can catch it. Yeah, see it, hear it, all the above, all the live it. Stuff. Let's wrap it up. Is did did we go over an hour? Hour yeah. and twenty. Hour and twenty or something. Hour and fourteen, fifteen. I thought we were doing good there for a while. That's okay. We were, and then you started talking, Jerry. Uh, All right. We're out of here. Sorry, Fred. That's okay. Once again, hope you had a good birthday, Ryan. Yep. It was Brett, all right. Glad you're past the pee situation. <laughs> Jim, you will get a sandwich. So from all of us to all of you, remember, if you can't take in a great IMCA event local... Check it out on IMCA TV or get that replay pass. This, uh-huh. this, re- th- I have to cut in. This reminds, me, this just reminded me of what it's like to sit at the racetrack when you when you announce the national anthem. You realize that it takes you longer to announce the national anthem than it does for the national anthem to actually. We've play. had this conversation. Before. You ever, actually, you ever had, go to you a, realize that? Now time out. Now oh, time out. His defenses are going to be <laughs> to come back do, and attack you, you on ever, the rebound. Have you yeah. ever sat through opening uh-huh. ceremonies or the introduction at a rodeo? You think mine is long? I mean, there's. First of all, it's it, it's the greatest. We song were in the this world. close to being. <laughs> yeah, we, we were this, this close. close. You, yeah. you I apologize to all the listeners. You wanted a hundred, uh, hundred and twenty minutes on this, but but it is what it is. I have a lot exactly. of people that like it, but I mean, okay. you go to Besides a rodeo. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it can be a two minute uh, introduction to the anthem. Well, you know what they say. Well, maybe Jerry. you want to take train from them so you're short All shortens right. up a little bit. Well, you I know had to what get I that say. in there. I mean, you can either sometimes you, you, you new, new ideas aren't that up. bad. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. So you can either sit through my introduction I'm to the eat national these anthem pretzels or so I can listen to you anymore. Brett's drivers meeting in the Super Nationals, but you know, the way the, <laughs> get the, the replay way the, pass. Maybe you missed something from earlier this year. The way the weather's been, it's reminded me of rodeo. Exactly. So we're out of here. Forty below, and I don't give up. <laughs> Got a heater in my truck. <laughs> Go to, Are you off to the done. rodeo. Done. D U N. See you guys next time. <laughs>